Jeff Jackson wasn't lying when he said the Oilers were considering a bio during his press conference three days ago. We'll get into that and more. There's a lot packed into this video, but please, before we start, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Jack Campbell's tenure as an Edmonton Oiler is over after just two seasons with the club. As I mentioned on the last video, Edmonton would save just shy of $4 million against the cap next season, followed by 2.7 and 2.4 in the following two seasons subsequently with the Campbell buyout. Here's how the whole buyout looks, which to me is a hell of a lot better than Campbell taking $5 million out of Edmonton's salary cap for the next three seasons. It's hard to say how Ken Holland's tenure with the Oilers is going to be remembered, but the signing of Campbell was no doubt one of his more significant blunders in that job. Campbell, in truth, had only played one single full NHL season as a starter when Holland decided to commit $25 million to the 30-year-old, and so to me, this buyout was the right choice and it's barely arguable. Campbell had flashes of play this season with the Bakersfield Condors that showed he could be an NHL goaltender, but Edmonton are trying to be competitive and they've got a few superstars due for significant raises over the next 12 months. You need that money in better positions than a goaltender who is only sometimes good enough to play in the NHL. Speaking of Oiler goaltenders, Edmonton announced earlier this week that they've extended goaltender Calvin Pickard, which in truth should have been the first sign that Jack Campbell buyout was uh, coming up. Um, they signed the 32-year-old Pickard to a two-year contract that'll pay him a million dollars a season. This was kind of a no-brainer for me as well. Pickard was great in a backup role both during the regular season and then when he was called upon in the playoffs in the second round against the Vancouver Canucks. And... The two-year deal makes sense to me because, in my personal opinion, by the time this contract is over, Olivier Rodrigue will be ready to be the Oilers' backup. He had a really solid year in Bakersfield, posting a 916 save percentage in 37 games. And more importantly, this was the second straight year that Rodrigue's game saw a significant improvement. He's 23 years old, and I'm hopeful that he can continue his upwards direction in his development. And it's been upwards pretty much since he had an ECHL stint back in 2021-22. Next up, the Oilers unsurprisingly tendered qualifying offers to five of their restricted free agents, Philip Broberg, Noel Hoffenmeyer, James Hamblin, Dylan Holloway, and Raphael Lavoie. Uh, Lavoie, Hamblin, and Hoffenmeyer will more likely than not be Bakersfield Condors next season, and they'll play to look to earn a call-up. Uh, of the three, I'm most hopeful that Lavoie can make an impact on the Oilers eventually. He's another guy that could easily be a late bloomer who turns into an NHL player much in the same way uh, that I was talking about Olivier Rodrigue. He he was a 2019 second round pick who really didn't impress me at all when he initially made the pro jump, but much like Rodrigue, he's really significantly improved in each of his last two seasons. The AHL is a hard league to score, and Lavoie had 28 goals in 66 AHL games last season. Uh, as for the two qualifying offers on the pro side, qualifying Phil Broberg and Dylan Holloway were no-brainers. They both played a pretty significant role for the Oilers in the playoffs, and especially if Edmonton allow Vincent Deharnay and Troy Stetcher to walk, it seems obvious that Broberg will have a top six spot set, uh, set for him. Tomorrow is, of course, day one of NHL free agency, and while I am always personally weary of throwing big money at free agents, there's some targets that could be decent bets for the Oilers. Edmonton currently have just shy of $13 million of cap space, and they have a significant amount of work to do to help replace the forwards that either have departed or will depart come July 1st. Edmonton have been publicly linked to two free agents, Jake DeBrusque and Sean Walker. Uh, both would be great ads for the Oilers, but whether one, both, or none of these two get done for Edmonton, I'm personally looking for the Oilers to add some middle six guys that can play up and down the lineup for the Oilers, provided you can afford them. There are five forwards that I'd personally love to see the Oilers uh, pursue that check my boxes, being that they will come cheap enough to fit in for the Oilers, and that these are all players I could see fitting in anywhere in the forward core. First up, 28-year-old Danton Heinen had 17 goals with Boston last year and has shown flashes throughout his career of his offensive upside. He's a guy that's worth a try with Edmonton superstars, in my opinion, but he could also be a strong contributor in the bottom six. Likewise, 31-year-old Stefan Nason had 36 and 37 points with Carolina over the last two seasons, and he plays a good grind game. 31-year-old Jordan Martinuk is another all-situations player who's shown flashes of offensive upside. He was one of Carolina's best players, if you don't uh, remember, back in the 2023 NHL playoffs. 29-year-old Sam Lafferty really impressed me in Vancouver last season. He scored a lot of big goals for the Canucks, and his ability to play center is valuable as well. Speaking of centers, I think 33-year-old Tyler Johnson could be a good option, if not the best option for a third-line center for the Oilers next year, especially if Ryan McLeod continues to play the wing. He had a really good season with Chicago last year, and Johnson probably wouldn't cost too much as the, 
against the cap and at his age probably wouldn't command more than a two-year deal. Finishing off today, I'll look at the Oilers draft. Right at the end of day one, the Oilers moved a future first round pick to Philadelphia for pick 32 and used said pick to select London Knights forward Sam O'Reilly. I'm seeing a lot about this guy being a right winger, but every viewing I had of him this year was him playing center. So I'm going to go ahead with the assumption that he plays center. That's all I saw him play last year. Uh, and he really played the best version of his game in the Memorial Cup, which I guess is what propelled him into the first round of the draft to begin with. Let's start with a player in cell, himself, and, and I've got a lot of good things to say because O'Reilly, in my opinion, is going to be an NHLer. He's got skill for sure, but what gives me hope is that he brings the details and the physical skills to thrive in that check and roll. It's like I said, you want guys that can play up and down the lineup. I think O'Reilly's going to be a really good bottom six forward. In what I've seen, he's a really relentless shutdown forward, and if he hits, I'd expect this guy to be a really nice third line center. However, what I don't like about this pick is that they were better players available. If you're going to pick a forward at the end of the first round, I want to see you take a swing on upside. And there were two highly skilled Russians that had dropped to the second round. I could easily see both Igor Chernyshov and Nikita Artemanov being top six forwards in the NHL, which I can't confidently say about O'Reilly. Other forwards I liked more than O'Reilly were available too, like Andrew Bash and Teddy Stiga, both of which I think have top six upside for sure that I don't know if O'Reilly has. But I probably wouldn't have even gone with a forward with this pick. Every single Oilers first rounder since 2019 has been a forward. And Charlie Ellick, a right shot play killing defensive defenseman, is who I thought the Oilers were targeting when they traded for the pick in the first place. I really like this guy and I think he could have fit in with the Edmonton Oilers sooner rather than later in all honesty. His offensive game needs a little bit of improvement but his defensive game is there. He's excellent in transition as well. Furthermore, other forwards were available at Edmonton's second round position at 64 that I would have been pretty uh, set on and might have been pretty on par with the caliber of players Sam O'Reilly is. So if Edmonton had picked Ellick with their first pick, they could have turned around at 64 and got a John Mustard, an AJ Spellacy, a Miguel Marquez, a Thomas Mercek, or a Luke Misa, all of which I don't think would have been much worse players to have than Sam O'Reilly. However, Edmonton opted after they picked O'Reilly 32 with Finnish goaltender Emil Vinny with pick 64, who was ranked anywhere between 31 and 68 coming into the draft I like this pick Vinny is a well-rounded goaltender who knows how to play to his strength he's six foot two he played the season in Finland's second division last year he's a really aggressive goalie and he loves to come out and attack opponents which really helps his shot stopping and once the Oilers had picked O'Reilly I really liked Vinny as the second pick he's probably got the highest ceiling in my opinion among all the goaltenders of this year's draft class and he combines his high level skill with his unique playing style and it catches a lot of shooters by surprise in in my opinion, if his game is going to continue to develop, I think he will be an NHLer one day. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.